Hello there, welcome back to The Closet Historian. Today I have the last of my Star Wars lookbook uh, related project videos for you all. Today I'm going to be going over how I made the galaxy skirt, the full length tool circle skirt situation that I had going on in that video as seen here, just because I want to use some footage of it again because I am really happy with how it came out on camera. Um, I was worried about this one. This is the last of the projects that I was like rushing to get done. And on, I made this in two days while I was finishing the set uh, because, again, I'm a bit bonkers, obviously, because uh, I don't know why I thought I still had time to make, like, a couture galaxy skirt sewn by hand or whatever, like I was planning on doing in the time that I had left, but I managed to make it work somehow. I did actually delay the video one day. I was hoping to have that lookbook video out on the Thursday, and it came out on the Friday, uh, because I did delay by one day to be able to finish this skirt, but in the end, I think it's worth it is like the finale gown of the whole thing. So it was worth spending that little bit of extra time on it, I think. But starting out with the inspiration for making something like this, I did make a galaxy skirt a while back, like uh, 2017, I think it was, or 2016. I can't really remember. I was making projects specifically because I was going to be visiting um, some of our family friends in France. I was very lucky to go on a trip to France um, a few years ago with my mom. And we were going to go take be around Paris. And I knew I wanted to take some epic pictures for my blog. Now these pictures in my head, you know, they turned out much better than they did in reality. Um, but here are a couple of photos of me in my first version of the galaxy skirt standing in front of the Opera Garnier or Garnier, eh? I can't say it properly. I don't speak French um, in Paris. Uh, of course, this is, you know, the idea, na the name of this post here was, I called it Space Opera because galaxy skirt in front of the opera house. You know, I was making a pun, you know, I don't, I never said that my humor was very sophisticated, you know? Um, so I wanted to make this space themed skirt as something special to wear while I was on my trip in Paris. So I ended up making this first version of my galaxy skirt. This, I quickly learned, you know, all my ideas of how I could do this quickly on the first version went out the window and I ended up doing a lot of like painting on the tool, um, which worked ish. Uh, but this was basically like the first trial version of trying to make a galaxy skirt myself. I was inspired to make something like this in general by a couple of Valentino collections and probably, you know, some McQueen and Galliano and Dior all floating in my head back then, um, just inspired by other couture galaxy themed dresses. I can put up some images here of some of the Valentino ones. You can see kind of what was floating around in my head that I knew I would never be able to afford a Valentino gown. So I figured the only way I would have anything like this in my wardrobe was to be making it myself. Um, so this was that first version of the galaxy skirt I made. I learned a lot doing it. Uh, I'm not really happy with how it came out. I'm not really happy with how the pictures came out. My hair was a mess that day. So, you know, it re really deserved to be uh, redone this whole, the whole idea. So then when I started planning the Star Wars lookbook, I thought, what could I do for a finale for this? I knew I didn't have a lot of, you know, time or money to invest in making some very like Padme-ish, like gorgeous Senate-ish gowns like they use in those films. I mean, in the prequel films for Star Wars, the costumes are amazing. And I can say that because not only are they look, do they look great in the film, but I have actually seen them live. There was a touring exhibition of the Star Wars costumes that came through Denver, a couple years ago and so I did get to see these kind of gowns up close and they are just as stunning as you would think they are. The detailing is amazing, the fabric, the um, embellishments they used, everything on these is gorgeous. So I knew I couldn't make anything like at this kind of level but I wanted to do something that was going to be kind of epic for the finale of this video and I figured oh you know I what could go together actually quite quickly is a galaxy skirt out of tulle and you know what's more you know on theme for a galaxy far, far away than an actual galaxy. So I thought, okay, I'll make that part of my plan. And then of course, the closer it got to actually filming the video and while I was working on the set and all the other things, I was like, shoot, I really am gonna be down to the wire on this one. So I did make this skirt again in two days, which is kind of, you know, silly. And uh, I shouldn't have done that. I should have planned ahead better, but you know, me and my time management skills, not quite there, not quite there. But the first step in creating this galaxy skirt was to create the underskirt. And I knew I wanted to create a black full length cotton sateen circle skirt just because I have a like usual length or T length kind of uh, black circle skirt out of the same fabric in my wardrobe already. And I wear it all the time. So I figured to have a sort of formal version of that would be nice to have on hand basically. So I decided to get some black cotton sateen from Joann's, one of my favorite fabrics. I just used it for that Luke dress that I was talking about here on the channel last week, of course. Uh, this fabric gets a lot of play in my life. I should just buy it by the bolt really, but um, I don't. But it's also nice and wide, which means that what I did was I took my circle skirt pattern 
You can see me draft my circle skirt pattern in my tropical 1950s dress video, by the way, I'll put a card up to that here. Um, I use the same circle skirt pattern for this as I did in that. So I'll show you how I drafted in that video. Um, but for this, all I did was trace that huge pattern and then add on some length. So it's the same exact circle skirt pattern as in that other video. I just made this one 42 inches long instead of like my usual 30 inch long skirt. So I just made this a little bit longer. Of course, that did make this pattern quite giant. So here you can see the full length version of the circle skirt pattern laid out on top of the black cotton sateen fabric. I think I did buy like, I told I bought eight yards because I was making that Luke dress as well, but it's probably around four and a half to five yards to make a skirt like this because I laid out the fabric, which is wide. I think this is a 54 inch wide fabric. Um, I don't, off the top of my head, I don't really remember, but I'm pretty sure it is. And you need that width in the fabric, of course, to cut something this large without having to do a bunch of seams. So after cutting out the giant front and back here of this skirt <laughs> out of the sateen, I went ahead and did serge the raw edges of the side seams before I went ahead and sewed them. So I put the zipper in, attached a waistband, just as you normally would. I don't, I don't think I filmed that step, I'm sorry. Uh, um, I do film, I do show later how I put the waistband on the tool one a little bit, so you can kind of get an idea. And then it was time to hem the sateen skirt. And to do this, I just sewed on double fold bias binding onto the right hand side. And then you take that and you iron it up into place, pin that, and then I hand hem the bias binding down. I do have a video showing how I hem with bias tape here on the channel. So I'll put a card up to that here now. So then the plain black underskirt out of cotton sateen was done. Here it is in the um, holiday lookbook here. So you can see what it looks like without the tool overlay on top of it. And then it was of course time to create the tool overlay for on top of it. Now, the part of the idea of doing this project was that I already had a lot of black tool like chilling in a box in my sewing room. I didn't know how much was there. I didn't know how wide it was or how PC it was or like how many holes were cut out of the middle of it or whatever. I just knew that it would save me some money that I already had some black tool sitting there. So I grabbed the tool out of there and like started pressing it a little bit very lightly with the iron because this stuff will melt. It's just nylon. Um, but I was uh, pressing it just to get most of the wrinkles out of it so I could see what I actually had. And so you can see here, this is the same pattern piece. And then I laid out two layers of black tulle on top of it. I had enough for most of the skirt, but not this little corner down here. So I did patch in a circular seam or a circular shaped area. Um, I just figured that with all the celestial circles going on anyway, you wouldn't notice if it was patched like this. So this is what I did to be able to use or like reuse a lot of the fabric I had in my stash without having to buy more black tool. Um, so I pieced together this piece here, pieced together this piece, honestly. Um, but this is just two layers of the black tool laid out flat on top of the pattern piece and then pinned in place, making sure nothing is getting stretched or warped, just like pinning it onto the paper pattern as a sort of way of, instead of having, cause I don't have like in a big embroidery frame or anything like that to hold, fabric taut while I'm doing sequining or beading work like this, but keeping it pinned to the pattern while I'm working on it really helps keep everything from going all disjointed or getting out of alignment and things like that. So I just pinned all the tool on top of this pattern piece and then cut away the excess around the edges. And that's basically how I got my tool overlay for like, this is one half of the skirt, obviously, but I just didn't film both sides because it's the same set of steps. You understand? You're there. Um, so then I had, originally planned on doing much more organic and freeform galaxy and aurora or like supernova ish shapes out of different colors of tool and like really layering and getting really creative and watercolor effect looking with this but then i i didn't have time to do that anymore so i had to come up with a new solution and then finally i just realized i could just cut large circles um to be like the planets in my galaxy as opposed to cutting like mm, like storm cloud kind of galaxy looking organic shapes, I could just cut like perfect circles. And that would give it almost more of a Mondrian, like I said, or Alexander Calder, much more of a mid century shapes situation going on anyway. And of course, I want to infuse both 1950s inspiration and Star Wars inspiration into this. And once I did decide to go with just doing circles and doing something much more graphic and less organic, I decided to restrict myself down to just the three colors, the red, the blue, like the primary colors, red, blue, and yellow. So I um, just cut different sized circles out of those colors of tulle. And I each of these circles on the skirt is layered up twice, again, just for more opacity so that the color would really shine through. If you're gonna make something like this and you wanted something more subtle, you could just use one layer of tulle. If you wanted something more opaque, like if you wanted the planets on this to be much more opaque, you could use a different fabric other than tulle, first of all, or you could just, um, but tulle doesn't have to be hemmed. That's why 
that's the thing about this that makes it so fast is because this entire tulle skirt, I don't have to hem it. I can just have it cut clean because it doesn't unravel because tulle is just nylon netting. Um, and same with these planets. I don't have to hem the edge. I can leave them raw on there. So that's another reason to use tulle here as opposed to something like silk organza or chiffon or other fabrics that unravel. Nylon tool, craft, crafty kind of level tool from Johans does not unravel like that. So you don't have to worry nearly as much about finishing things, which uh, I guess in some ways lends a more crafty look to it, but I was kind of decided to lean into the crafty look as you'll see here. So after I had the planetary geography kind of laid out here on the floor, I pinned all of these circles through the tool as well so they would all stay in place. And then I moved this big half a skirt onto my patterning table here in the sewing room because I didn't want to be on the floor while I was doing all this work. Not that hunching over the table was that much better for my back, but I digress. So then to attach the circles of colorful tool onto the black, I decided to just use a large running stitch with embroidery floss. So embroidery floss comes in um, a strand of like six individual threads. I separated that by half. So it was three threads of embroidery floss on like a big, large, like crazy size needle that I found in one of my old needle um, needle books that was actually a vintage needle book that was a gift from someone. And I was like, this is going to about to come in real handy. Um, so I just went ahead and went around each circle with a very large running stitch, again, kind of leaning into the crafty, crafted look of this. I wanted to almost look like a child's sketch at this point. I was thinking, oh, I can kind of just, that's the thing. Like when you have a limitation, like time or like materials that you can't have access to, or even a limitation in skill, I think sometimes it's best to kind of lean into that. So like for even for my lookbook videos, like part of the reason that I always use vintage effects and make them try and make them look like old film reels is because my camera is not the highest 4k quality. I could not achieve a like 4k kind of look, but I can lean into like the bad grainy sort of look and just go extra hard there. So I think sometimes using your limitations and trying to figure out how you can use that to your advantage can lend to good creative solutions sometimes, um, or things that you would not, like instead of doing, trying to do one thing and not being able to hit it, better to lean into areas of opportunity. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. So anyway, I was leaning into the crafty look and I just sewed these on with embroidery floss is what I was trying to say there really went existential on that one. I chose to use embroidery floss that matched the colors of the tool for each of these. Um, and then for like the larger, when there was a larger and a smaller planet together, I um, always did the smaller planet in a circle and then kind of scooped out the area around the larger one behind it. I think you can kind of see that in some of this footage, hopefully. Um, and then it was time to sew on all of the sequins. Blech. So I have a lot of sequins in my stash. These large star ones, I think actually were a Michael's or a Joanne's find. The small stars, however, I think I bought online. I will link my favorite resource for sequins. It's called Cartwright's Sequins and Beads or something in the description. They're an amazing website resource for sequins. And it's not like they're expensive or anything because they're just little tiny flakes of plastic. And they come in every color and shape and size. And I'm sorry about you having to place an order with them. Um, I, I know you weren't planning on doing that today, but now that I've told you about them, I wish you good luck because <laughs> there's no way if you like this sort of thing that you're not going to be picking up a few things. My apologies. But I really did just individually sew all these sequins on to the skirt. I kind of chose to make it more concentrated up at the top of the skirt and then the galaxies sort of fade away or the stars sort of fade away as it gets to down towards the hem. And that is, of course, a design decision and also a time decision because I knew I couldn't cover this thing in completely in sequins and beads because I didn't have the time if I was going to be sewing them all on by hand, which I did. Like, again, I don't know where I get these notions that I have time for these things. So I just um, started each little section. I did these in like little constellations. And this is something I learned doing that first galaxy skirt. And what's nice about this is if you were to wear a different color underskirt underneath this tool overlay, you would see these lines between the sequins. So I've always made sure to make them kind of look like how constellation maps look. Um, that was just my idea behind this. You can just sew them on anywhere you want, especially if your tool and your underskirt match, you're not going to see these threads. But in the future, I possibly might be making a lighter colored underskirt to wear underneath this. And then you will see those little lines and it'll look like a constellation map, which I think is kind of cool. But I just, again, leaning into the crafty kind of feel of this, just tied off a knot and left the knot on the surface of the tool. So I went through a small gold bead into the tool, came back up after a straight line. Each sequin or star is about an inch apart. Um, and I was just keeping that consistent as I went around and going in kind of geometric, again, constellation inspired shapes as I came back up through the tool 
put a sequin on, put a bead on, and then you go back through the sequin. I'll try and find an image online. Hopefully no one will be mad at me for using their clip art of how this works. You just go up through the sequin, you up from underneath the fabric, through the sequin hole, through a bead, and then back through the sequin hole and back to the fabric. So the bead holds that sequin on. Hopefully you kind of get what I'm saying, but it is all just done by hand. And I just did all these constellations all over this skirt. Um, mostly again, concentrating them up near the top, but you know, it was just a lot of listening to podcasts and sewing these on while layers of paint were drying on the set in the other room. And so I would do like a couple hours of sequining and then I would go and paint another layer onto the set, wash my hands real good, come back, do some more like couture sequining. So it was like jumping between this like very fine tool and sequins project and then like literally having my hands covered in latex paint in the other room. So it's an interesting idea. So after I had finished the sequining and any of the embroidering stitching work I needed to do on this side of the skirt, I of course had another one that I had done. So I just went ahead and sewed the two sides together along the side seam on my machine with like a small stitch length. And I just left a portion of the side seam open on the left-hand side of this skirt and pressed the seam allowance down and sewed around that area to kind of hem it. This is normally where you would put a zipper in. I did not bother to do that on this because I knew there were gonna be there was gonna be an underskirt underneath it anyway. So it's not like it would be like a slit open to see me. Um, it was just gonna be for the underskirt. And I assumed it would lay pretty flat because not that this is a very weighty thing, but the weight of the skirt would pull it along the seam anyway. And it would just have a little slit there. That's, I have no problem with that being the way that this is closed. If I wanted to be super, super fancy about it, I might put like a little like flap underneath here so that I could snap that area closed with like little hand sewn snaps. But I didn't have the time to do that for this particular you know, wearing of this. I may, I can add that in the future if I want to, but I don't really see a reason to do anything other than this. This seems to work quite fine. So after I had the side seam sort of figured out, I went ahead and added a waistband onto the top of this skirt. Again, I just sewed the skirt onto a strip of black cotton sateen to make a little waistband for this. I didn't put anything inside, I don't think, to reinforce this even just because this is all going on top of other things. This is an overskirt. There's gonna be another skirt underneath it anyway. It doesn't have that much weight being pulled on it ever. I thought it would be fine without any extra stuff going on. Um, and then I just attached a skirt hook to that waistband. And then this skirt was done because it doesn't need a hem, of course, because again, you just cut the edge of tulle and it's fine. So as long as you cut it nicely, you don't need to sew a hem on something like this. You can, I have never done it before, <laughs> but I, whenever I use tulle, I usually just leave the hem raw, especially because it's like a nice ethereal floaty look without having anything down there. I think it looks nice. So no hem for this guy and it was all, finished and ready to wear. And thank goodness, because I had to film the video the next day, of course. So the first time I ever even saw this skirt on and what it looked like finished and done and all together was when I was started editing the lookbook. So I was really happy to see how it sparkled and everything with the lights. And I'm really happy with how this skirt came out. I would gladly wear it uh, to, you know, a Star Wars film premiere if anyone wants to get me an invite or to any other fancy event. Not that I ever need gowns, but if I ever did, now I have a really fancy skirt to wear if I should like. Um, so this is really something that is quite easy to make. It's just time consuming. So there's that. But again, it's not like a very, you don't need a, a couture level skill to make something like this. You can definitely work up to this. Maybe do a couple of samples of the kind of similar sequining on uh, scratch fabric or make something like a shorter skirt first before you jump into something long like this. But really it's just not too, too difficult. It's just time consuming, you know? So that's my new and improved galaxy skirt, uh, order of operations, basically how to make one of these. I was actually a little bit bummed once I realized later I could make these, this skirt look, I could have made it look more like the galaxy star maps that they use, like the navigational maps that they use in Star Wars. I'll try and include some images here of what those look like. I think that would be really pretty as well to do it all black gown like this, but just use like the aqua kind of color that they use for their galaxy map displays. I think that'd be really pretty, especially if I could find star sequins that were that same color. I don't know if they have that out there, but they have almost every sequin ever, so I'm sure somebody does. So I hope this was interesting for those of you who wanted to know how I put together this tool overlay skirt situation. Um, I know this wasn't as detailed as maybe it could have been, and I am sorry about that. It's just, you know, I had to cut something for time and filming every step of this was the thing that got cut, unfortunately. Um, if you'd like to see me make more embroidered or embellished project like the projects like this in the future, let me know because I do like working with sequins and things, even if it is a little bit more on the tedious side. So let me know if you'd like to see more embellishment kind of projects in the future from me. And thank you as always for tuning in today. I'll see you again soon.
Bye.